Okay, so this video's got a few moving parts to it. So first of all, I've been receiving some really neat different varieties of figs and other fruiting plants and some cuttings, yes Henry, some cuttings lately from you guys and I just can't thank you enough. So we're gonna show you that and then it, after that, I'm gonna go ahead and bare root a fig tree and we're gonna ship it up north to a new friend I've made, Kim, over the summer and she's in the fig world, Kim Tian's her name. She actually graciously agreed to doing a video when the package arrives to her so that we can see an unboxing of it after I put it all together here. Now if you're interested, Kim does have a YouTube channel where she posts results of the fruiting plants at her place. Check out her channel, I'll put a link in the description below. She also has a really cool Instagram page, I'll put a link down to that below as well, where she posts cool photos of a lot of different fruiting plants and different, just the results of the fruits at her place. So go check those out now. All right, I think that's it. Let's kick this one off and head back a few days. Well, I've been so blessed lately from you guys. Just recently, I received several packages in the mail. One, a bunch of fig cuttings from a guy named Steve on the other side of the mountain. I think he said it was called Black Celeste. And I hadn't even heard of that variety until he mentioned it to me, but I thought, yeah, I'd love to try it because last summer we planted that improved Celeste out in our orchard and that thing just grew vigorous and produced tons of fruit early on and then continued to produce fruit on into the fall. So my daughters and I fell in love with it. It was a great tasting fig. Now, it's not going to taste as good as some of those real special varieties that usually only ripen in warm climates, but it was a great tasting fruit and it was so vigorous and produced so well. So definitely a keeper here, but this is a darker variety of that. So I can't wait to get these stuck and get these guys rooted. I'll probably do a video of that for you guys at some point in the future, but right now I want to show you something else. Not only did Steve send me that package, but I made a new friend on Facebook over the last summer. Her name's Kim, she's in the What The Fig Facebook group. Really cool lady, and she sent me a variety of fig that I have never had, but I've been wanting for a long time, and that is the Grantham's Royal. Why did I want this fig? Because it's a San Pedro variety, and as you guys probably know, in the Pacific Northwest, the Desert King, which is a San Pedro variety, are the best figs for this area because they have a Breba crop. In fact, they have a really great Breba crop that tastes wonderful and I'm told by some people that they don't taste as good as the main crop figs in a warmer zone that get pollinated by the right wasp, but for just about anywhere else you can grow in the country that doesn't have the wasp, they make the best crop of Breba. So this is also a San Pedro and it's a lighter fig with a more yellow looking interior. So I'm excited to get this one out in the orchard. Let's take a look at what we've got in this package. Wow, Kim, you got that sucker packaged up good. All right, and there's a the little top of it I can see. And there she is. Oh man, I'm excited to get this fig. That is gonna be so awesome. Another San Pedro, Grantham's Royal. All right, let's take a look at how this guy looks. So she sent it uh, bare root and she said she was gonna do that. It just makes it a lot easier for shipping and cheaper. You don't have to ship all that weight. But uh, she got packaged up nice. We got it, the roots in a nice little bag. They're nice and moist. Look at that. She's even got the little fig labeled there. There it is, Grantham's Royal. Excited about this fig and I can't wait to get it in the ground. But in the meantime, I'm gonna pot this up we're in November right now, uh, almost Thanksgiving in a couple days. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. And uh, we still got a ways to go. So I'll get it potted up into some bark in a pot and leave it in here so that I can control how much moisture gets to it. So thanks, Kim, for this fig. I've really been looking forward to this one. I'm excited about it. I'm gonna get this potted up now. And now I've got something for you. And you know exactly what I'm sending because we've been talking about this. But uh, I'm going to go get that Smith fig out and rinse off all the bark, and we'll send that guy bare root to you. So if you guys want to see how I'm going to do this, let's go get that fig out, and we're going to just bare root this thing, wrap it up the same way she did, and ship it off in a box. All right, so before we go any further, let's get this Grantham's Royal potted up. 
So I've got my pruners out here and the first thing I'm gonna do is just prune up these roots a little bit because we don't need these long roots from a bare root plant. It's dormant right now, it's winter time. This guy's asleep, it's kinda like doing surgery on somebody under anesthesia. So it's not gonna hurt this little dormant plant at all to take some of this root material off and it's actually gonna be a lot healthier for the plant to do this because what it's gonna do in the springtime is force new roots to grow from further back to, on the root and branch out even more. And this thing will just have more fibrous roots to absorb nutrients and moisture. And there it is all pruned up. So don't worry, it's okay to do this. It's essentially like taking a big cutting and in the springtime sticking that in a pot and we've shown you in other videos how that works really well and as the weather warms up that cutting roots well the same thing's going to happen with this only this has got a leg up because it's already rooted so all of these roots are just going to start growing like crazy there's no need to worry about rooting a cutting so this is just fine to do in the winter time while the plant's dormant i wouldn't do it obviously in the summertime while it was awake but winter time's a great time to bare root these things and then trim the roots and don't forget, this is done all the time with bonsai trees. And that's all there is to it. I'm just gonna set this in the hoop house and let it wake up this spring. Thank you so much, Kim. I'm excited to see this thing fruit. All right, so now we've got our Smith fig that I'm gonna send to Kim. So I wanna get this guy out of here and ball and burr, or not ball and burlap, but bare root it for her so we can ship it in the mail. So I'm just gonna pull this out first and start knocking bark off away from all of those roots. Now I'm not trying to break up a bunch of roots. Look at that, cool gnarly root right there just circling around that's not necessarily a good thing when you have a root like that it can girdle a tree so you got to be careful with that kind of thing leaving these in pots too long but this is a real healthy tree it actually grew last summer very well it had a ton of figs on it and uh i'm not worried about it i'll take a look at it once we get all the once we get all the soil out of here and see how it looks if i have to i can cut that little root away but I don't want to cut it away if it's a an important root for this guy so we're just gonna tease all this apart here take your time I mean I'm, I'm being kind of rough but I'm also being careful not to rip too many roots away from the main trunk and this thing was really well rooted as you can see it's just got a mass of roots in there there we go, we're starting to get down to some thicker, thicker roots in there. I'm really curious to see what's in here with this big fat guy here. Look at that, I'm getting it loose. Yeah, this one may have been in that pot a little longer than it should have been. I probably could have up-potted it last spring and it would have done real well. I mean, it did real well last summer, but I could have up potted it. Of course, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. It did well last summer. And there it is. We have shook out all the, all the bark from there. So now we've got just this huge amount of roots. You can see I just ripped off that one. And that's going to be fine. I actually, now that I'm looking at it, you can see originally See how those are all kind of circling? There's a bunch of circled roots down in there. Those are the original roots in the Dixie cup that I had rooted this thing in. Isn't that crazy? So I'm gonna actually pull that root away. There we go. Pull it out. I'm gonna cut it off, I think. Let's get this cleaned up a little better. And you can use water to do this. I'm just trying to get this cleaned up without water right now. So there it is. When all said and done, I got all of the, uh, all the bark out of there, or all the potting soil, or whatever you're using. And you can see that root was wanting to circle this thing. And over the years, it might've caused a problem. So I'm glad we caught that in time. 
So I'm just going to take this right here and I'm going to snip that off and it'll start growing multiple branching. You can see it's already doing that off of that piece. Let me see if I can get an angle for you. See that? It's already growing multiple uh, roots off of that little trunk right there and it, it'll stop that girdling action. And we've got many more roots all along this stem so I'm not worried at all about cutting that one. This is going to be a real healthy fig tree. Now the last thing I'm going to have to do with this, because it's so big, we're talking from one branch to the other, we've got about a foot, maybe 14 inches of spread between here, and it's not going to fit in the box I have. So I'm going to have to take this branch off. It's not the worst thing in the world because we can always take more cuttings, but I'm going to cut that branch off right there, and we'll just get that guy rooted, no problem at all. Now I'm also going to take this branch off too because it's just too big for the narrow box I have. So we'll take that one, another cutting, and then what you end up with is just a nice, real easy to ship, bare rooted Smith fig. It's just a nice, going to be a nice tree. And you can see here, if you look closely, I don't know if I can get a close view of this, but anyway, all these little sites where old leaves were, all along here, now that we've pruned this back, here's one right here, that looks real nice, right there. I don't know if that'll show up or not. Uh, right along there, there's going to be a couple branches come off at that point, and then we got lots of branching up top, so this thing is just going to branch out even more now and be a nice healthy tree. Now I'm going to take this bare rooted smith fig and first thing I'm going to do, since I, I kind of wet that down with water so it's moist, I'm just going to wrap it in some newspaper so it absorbs a little bit of that moisture because we don't want any of that water leaking out and getting the box wet. That way this will this will absorb some of that moisture and it'll still retain plenty of moisture for the roots. It's only going an hour north of me. Then I'm going to stick all of this right in the same bag that Kim just sent me. Recycling at its finest. And as long as we're at it, I might as well just wrap it in the same plastic that she wrapped mine in. Talk about repurposing. And there it is. All right, so I've got this fig tree all wrapped up real nice. Now, I just want to give it something to protect it a little further while it's in the box. And what I'm going to do is roll it up inside of this cardboard. And if you saw my last uh, video on shipping, which was actually a couple of years ago, you will know exactly where I get this cardboard from. I'll put a link to that video down in the description below. You can go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. And that's it. So we've got this fig just stuck down in there in that cardboard and it's wrapped real tight. It's not going anywhere. I even put a piece of tape down in there to hold the branch to the cardboard. The last thing we're going to do is just stuff it in this box. And of course all boxes come in different shapes and sizes, but uh, these you can get through the postal system. They're free and they're real easy for shipping bare rooted plants. I'll just close up the top and then we'll seal it up put a label on it and send it off to Kim. Okay, so I got a package from my friend Mike. He's in Yelm, Washington. It's only a one day shipping, which is really fast. And um, let's unbox it, let's see what we have. Paper roll. This is a little overkill. Dad. This is a little overkill. Oh. There it is. 
Little, little bit of that. No, I mean the piglets. Mm -hmm. I think it's too late for. for yeah, the figs to ripen. So, what when you get this? Since this is bare root, um, what you gonna do with it? Plant it. Okay. All right. Okay, checking out. All right, so I thought that was pretty cool. I love seeing those before and after and how things are gonna be shipped and arrived. Of course, it was only an hour and 15 minutes north, but you get the idea. So thank you, Kim and Kim's husband. I know you guys said you were a little camera shy. I appreciate you doing that and sending it over. So, as usual, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you wanna follow along and see how all these little fig cuttings that I showed you turn out and how all these trees grow out in the nursery. I hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios!